By now, most of us are no longer freaked out by the way Amazon greets us by name and makes eerily appropriate product suggestions as soon as we land on its virtual doorstep. An extrapolation of that tech was my favorite sequence in Steven Spielberg's Minority Report. The recommendation engines of Amazon and other websites utilize the vast amount of data they have on their customers' shopping habits. It's essentially looking at the book through statistics, stepping back, not knowing anything but the intrinsic uh, qualities of the, that particular book or car or magazine or whatever. Tim Westergren is founder and chief strategy officer of Pandora, a personalized web-based radio service. It's a profoundly simple application. You just type in a song or artist and it creates a station, starts streaming. If you want to, you can kind of thumb up, thumb down, and you can create up to 100 of those, and they'll travel with you no matter where you are, what device you listen to. It really is that simple to use. But what you can't see, under the hood, is that they've developed a unique approach to music recommendation. And it's not based on related purchases, but on the musical characteristics of songs. It relies on something called the Music Genome Project, which is something we've been working on for almost a decade now. And it's a, an enormous, essentially, collection of songs that we have manually analyzed uh, along close to 400 attributes per song, kind of like musical DNA. You heard that right. Each of the songs in Pandora's database has been analyzed manually, not by software, by humans. We have a team of 25 musician analysts, so these are all professionally trained musicians, and this is kind of their day job. Is that necessary that they be professional musicians? Yeah, you need serious theory chops to do what they do. The basic idea is we take every aspect of, of a recording, so there's the melody, there's harmony, there's rhythm, there's form, and each one of those is, di is broken down into its most basic building blocks. Time reporter Lev Grossman has researched a lot of recommendation engines and agrees that Pandora is a little different. Most recommendation engines work off of data from uh, audience reactions. Somebody like Netflix, for example, you watch a movie, you rate it, you say how much you liked it. They add it to their database of probably billions of other user ratings and try to find a, a match. And uh, the blockbuster movies tend to get bigger and bigger, and the little ones don't tend to get bigger. Uh, Pandora uh, is not a popularity contest, and that's kind of cool. Pandora is blind to everything else. We don't know when we play a song for you if it's a well-known song or a completely obscure artist. It's, it's not a factor in deciding what song plays. Tim is a former professional musician, and the original concept for Pandora was to find a way to help undiscovered bands find an audience. If you ask most adults, they'd say, you know, I can't find any new bands, new music. I don't have time. I can't go browse the record store for the afternoon anymore. I've got a job and a family. And, and so I think, you know, we're trying to solve that. And there's a huge need there. But while Pandora does help predict the sounds we'll like, it's not about to replace your lifelong friend who says, I thought of you when I heard this. I know you'll like it. The way you respond to music uh, is such a, a complex cocktail of, of, of memories and personal associations. And yes, those 400 musical characteristics that you can never quite replicate it in software. And, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's sort of romantic in a way. Pandora's sort of tracing this, uh, chasing this dream. Uh, and they'll never quite get there. Um, but they get, as time goes by, closer and closer. For Time.com, I'm Brian Mallow.